Going on a cycling adventure is something that any of us can try. Whether it's one big epic ride, maybe an overnight trip, or a big epic, epic multi-day trip. Going on a cycling adventure is an unbelievably incredible, rewarding experience. And if you're thinking about giving it a go, go for it, you can do it. Don't think it's an unrealistic pipe dream. So to help you out and on your way off onto those roads, I thought I'd share with you my top tips to adapt your road bike, yeah, that one in your garage, for your own adventure. Okay, so to explain all this to you, I've decided to use my Pinarello. It's the bike I use for all my usual riding here at GCN, you know, getting beaten by Hank in sprints, riding to the cafe, or just a couple of easy hours cruising on the local lanes. But today, I'm getting it ready for adventure. So first up, storage. How are you gonna carry all your gear on a bike with no panniers or racks, you may ask? Well, you could use bike packing bags. Bike packing bags allow you to carry a large amount of gear cleverly attached to the frame of your bike without the need for those pannier racks, which my road bike doesn't have. So, on they go. Okay, right, so here we have a seat bag, a frame bag, and a handlebar bag. And these bags are designed for carrying the bulk of your gear when you're going off on an adventure. So things like toiletries, spare clothes, spare bits of equipment for your bike, maybe a sleeping bag up front, or even, you know, nappies if you're going on a family adventure. And you could carry the bulk of this gear in a backpack and carry it on your back. And don't let me stop you in that respect. If you're gonna go for that, do it. Don't, don't, let, don't let anything get in the way of your adventure. But if you can, put it on your frame because it will take the weight off your lower back and your bike will be carrying the weight instead, which will make for a much more enjoyable ride. Okay, so you can carry 24 liters of stuff in these bags you see here. And actually, the seat bag comes in a larger size. This is 10 liters, but it can come in a 15 liter size, which would mean you'd be able to carry 29 liters in total with this Topic bike packing bag set. And that means you can actually carry 16 and a half kilos in weight, which is Seriously impressive if you ask me. Of course, you don't need to fill these bags to their maximum weight, and neither do you need to take all the bags together. You could use a couple of bags, or you could just use a single seat bag if you're going on a shorter duration trip. Pack light, travel far. Remember, anything you do pack will be weight that you'll be carrying uphill. Be ruthless, really ruthless when you're packing. Do you really need those bulky trainers, for instance, or can you get away with lighter flip-flops, which will fit much more easily in your bags? And do you really need that spare casual t-shirt? Just think about what you're packing and try and cut down if you can. I'm gonna pack this up now and uh, show you how I get my seat bag packed. My outer waterproof layer, jersey in as well. Two bottoms. Jersey. Flippity flopperties. I'll keep them out if I need them. <laughs> Toweling, big towel. Bathing. I think I've been a bit ambitious with the towel. All oh, right, it's gonna do it. There we go. Large bulky items can be taken too. Camping, a handlebar bag like this one can carry a large sleeping bag and keep it dry too. All your gear will be kept waterproof too, with it all being kept safe inside a dry bag inside an outer waterproof layer. So, you can't use the rain as an excuse. Okay, so that's the bulk of my gear on my road bike. So next up, lights. Even if you're doing an adventure in the middle of summer where you might not be riding in the dark, lights are still an essential in my opinion. You may have an unexpected stop which delays your riding, leading you to ride long into dusk, and also you may come across some tunnels. So it's always a safe and good idea to carry some lights with you. So at the very least, bring some smaller LED lights, just like this one I have here. This is USB rechargeable and great if you do find yourself riding in darker conditions. Now, you can attach these, clip them on to your bike on the frame, or you could clip them onto your bike packing bags just at the back there. And you know, leave them there, then they're ready to be turned on if and when they're needed. Now, I also use another smaller 
LED light, which is quite a cheap one to be honest. You can pick it up at a bike shop or a petrol station. It's plenty similar to this model. And it's just another little handy one, which you can attach anywhere. I put it onto my helmet here. And these LED lights are more for kind of making sure you're visible to other road users rather than you actually seeing the road yourself. Okay, so if you are riding in the dark for a longer period of time, then you might want to consider something a bit bulkier and a bit more powerful to light the way. So, yeah, not that bulky, is it? It's not that heavy either, it's pretty light. Now, this is a front light and it will give you a whopping 1500 lumens with a maximum battery life of 36 hours. So perfect for lighting your way. And I've got a rear light as well. This one, a rear light, will give you a maximum 80 lumens with 48 hours battery life. And I use these two when I did my summer solstice ride with Hank throughout the night and worked perfectly. Really easy to light up the road and see where you're going. And also pretty light and easy to attach to your frame. So I'll whack those on. I must say, brighter than my brother-in-law and I just tracked her too. Phone, bike computer, lights, GoPro batteries, maybe an e-reader. I know paper books are great, but heavy, think about it. Whatever electronics you do decide to take though, you will be able to charge them, so don't worry, there's a number of options. If you're staying in accommodation, what I'd recommend is bringing a multi-socket USB plug. That way you can plug in all your devices into one plug without the need for carrying multiple plugs and you can take lighter cables to get all those devices charged. Now, if you're staying in remote areas, perhaps you're camping, then maybe think about getting a power pack. I picked this one up in my local electronics store. It's about 50 euros, but it's got 15,000 milliamp hour capacity. So that can charge your phone around five times over. It's got multiple sockets, weighs 340 grams, and it's slim enough that you can fit it in your bags rather easy. So it is a good option if you are going into remote areas. You could also think about getting a solar charger if you are going to remote areas for a long period of time and you want to top up your electronics after a number of days and you don't think a portable battery pack will quite do the job. I always like to take a few more spares with me when I go out on an adventure just to make sure that I can overcome any setbacks which may arise once I'm out on the road. So here's a list for your own reference of things that I like to take with me when I go out myself. Spare tire, a number of spare inner tubes, and also a puncture repair kit is very handy. It means you don't have to take as many spare inner tubes. Spare chain link, spare brake pads, a couple of spare spokes for the wheels that you're using. Small tub of wet chain lube when I'm out and about in my adventure. That way you can give the chain a quick top up in between days because, well, your chain does tend to need re-lubrication out and about. I also like to put on new tires and regrease any bearings on the bike before leaving, just making sure the bike is in good condition really. And also, don't forget to charge your electronic gears. Done that before. Right, if you can, store all your mechanical bits in a small little pouch or maybe a dry bag, just so you can keep it separate from the rest of your gear. You don't want all your beloved t-shirts getting greasy, do you? And if you can, store it in the center of your bike, in your frame bag, for example. If you put all the added weight in your frame, you'll keep a better center of gravity and also your frame bag can actually take more weight because it's got much more support from the frame. So just a little tip there for you. Also, I like to chuck in some cable ties. Nice, long, strong ones. You never know when you might need them and they're quite a handy thing to have for any kind of eventuality. And also they're very light and won't take up too much room. So it is worth chucking in a few. Also, I take a really good multi-tool with me with plenty of options, including a chain breaker. That way you stand the best chance of fixing any mechanicals whilst you're out on your adventure and you won't have to curtail it or take a detour to a bike shop if anything does go wrong. I recently did a video on route planning, which you can find here, but here are some of the basics for you. Creating a GPX file is a great way of staying on track once you're out on your adventure. You can download it to your head unit and it's really simple to follow on the go, creating less navigational hiccups. If you're doing a multi-day trip, well, I'd advise creating all these GPX files in advance, downloading them to your head unit so you can select each day's riding when you're leaving in the morning or afternoon if you like a lion. Now, Kamut's multi-day trip planner is a great tool which does this all in one place. You simply Create your adventure from A to B and then it will split it up into today's riding. So it's all ready to go for you to select 
once you're out on the road. Extend the battery life of your bike computer by turning off the Bluetooth connectivity and any other wireless connectivity too. Also, if you turn down the backlight, that will also save battery and make your device last for longer. Similarly, if you're using a phone, then download the maps for offline use. This way, you're not relying on mobile internet or Wi-Fi to check where you're going. What food to bring? Now, that is the question, always an important one for me, actually. I never want to be going hungry at all. And I think, in terms of food in your adventure, you want to kind of know where you're going, if you're going to remote spots or if you're passing through towns, where you might be able to refill. Refilling as you go is always a good option, because it means you won't have to carry the excess weight for the whole trip. Equally though, if you are going into remote spots, try and carry, you know, calorie dense food that you can pack into a small space. Things like porridge, which you may, or oats for porridge, which you may be able to cook on a gas stove, or rice, which you may be able to boil on the stove as well. It's not super exciting, but it'll get your calories and give you the energy you need to keep riding. Equally, if you are using bike packing bags, then use the elasticated mesh on the outside to stuff a few bits of bars and sandwiches maybe, a bit of extra food externally to the bag which you can quite easily take whilst you're riding. It's also a handy spot to put a spare rain jacket as well. Another option to consider is getting a small stem mounted handlebar bag just to carry a bit of extra food and this is great even if you're going on a big one day ride and your pockets are bulging, you can't fit everything in. It's great just to keep all your food in a convenient position. This one will take one litre so you can get a bottle and maybe some food in or just stuff it full of food like I like to do. I call it my food pouch. Nice, easy position, easy accessible to get munching on the go. As I said earlier, try to whack some new tyres on before leaving for your adventure. This will give you less chance of getting a puncture and it will also mean you'll have a greater amount of time before your tyres wear out, especially if you're going on a long trip. I'd also try and switch to as wide a tyre as possible. For many of us, this will be 28 mil, but for some of us, it could be up to 32 mil, if you're talking about my Orbea Orca. And I think the wider the better, in my opinion. With all that extra gear, your bike will be heavier than usual. If you run a wider tyre, you'll be able to run a lower pressure without the risk of a pinch flat. You'll have a more comfortable ride and also I think as a result, you'll be able to handle your bike a lot better with the bags on it. So you'll feel more stable and confident as a result of opting for the wider tyre. And also if you can, I'd opt for disc brakes. I think with all the extra weight, again, if you have disc brakes, you'll be able to handle your bike a lot better on the descents. You'll have a bit more superior braking power, especially in the wet. And I think it'll just make for a more enjoyable adventure. You may also want to think about relaxing your position a bit. If your bike is set up in a super aggressive racer star position, then you might want to think about changing this when you go out on your adventure. Maybe raise your handlebars a little bit at the front or double wrap your handlebar tape for comfort. Also, before you set off on your adventure, try riding with your bags attached to your bike with your full setup so you can really get an idea not only how the bike feels, but also if the bags are hindering your pedaling style. And if it is, then you can make changes, adapt, and prepare for when your adventure starts for real. Another thing to think about is gear selection. Now, with all these bikes, you'll have extra weight, which is gonna mean it's gonna be more work up those climbs. So if you can, select an easier gear before you leave. That could mean putting a compact chain set on front or a larger cassette on the back, just to give you more options and an easier gear that will allow you to spin up those climbs. So those are some of my tips for your next cycling adventure. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it's inspired you to get out on your bike and try something new. But if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comment section below. It's great to share all this information, I think. And let's get a poll going on the GCN app. Have you been on a big bike adventure before? And if so, in what capacity? Be interested to hear what everyone's take is on that and what the spread is. But I guess I better get back to my riding really. I've got some mountains to conquer and lovely river to see. So see you all soon everyone. Ta-ta!